my name is Sage. And we are biologists at Moody Gardens here in Galveston. So what we do is we work with jellyfish like the ones behind us. We get to take care of them every single day. Today we're going to show you a little bit of what it's like to take care of animals such as jellyfish. And we're going to give you a couple of tips and advice on what you can do to prepare yourself to use in this field. One really cool thing and probably my favorite thing about my job that we do here at Moody Gardens with the jellyfish is we culture, meaning we breed them and raise them through their entire life. Right now we have one culture going, it is our moon jellyfish culture. So jellyfish have really interesting and intricate life cycles. They start out as tiny little specks called planula and eventually they will develop into what we know as jellyfish or medusa. So that planula will move around the tank and find a nice smooth spot to settle down onto and they'll turn into a polyp. Now a polyp pretty much just looks like a teeny tiny anemone. From there, they will actually elongate or become longer and segment or break into several little sections. Each section will turn into a baby jellyfish called an Ephyra. Now Ephyra look pretty similar amongst all different species of jelly but the one that you'll see here is from the moon jelly. It's little and orange, and it will pulse around in its tank for a couple of weeks as it grows its bell, or that nice circular shape that you think of when you think of jellyfish. Here, like I said, we will grow our own jellies all the way from that polyp stage up to Medusa. Another really cool thing we do here at Moody Gardens is we will actually grow our own food called live food. Most of the food we culture here is called artemia, also known as brine shrimp. The reason that we have live food specifically for jellyfish is you might notice jellyfish don't have eyeballs. So they don't hunt the same way that you would see a shark or a fish hunting. Instead, they use those tentacles to capture their prey, very similar to fishing line. So they need to have food that is out in the water column so they can catch it. And the best way to keep water in the water column is to have it swimming. So we will feed live food three times a day to make sure that the jellies always have something to snack on. The really cool thing about live food is not only are we taking care of the animals that are out on exhibit, all of our different jellyfish, but we also get to take care of the food that feeds our animals. So once we have this live food, we'll hatch it out, grow it out a little bit, soak it in vitamins so that it's nice and nutritious for the animals, and then we will feed it out. Just like us, jellyfish have to eat three times a day. Here at Moody Gardens, we feed our jellyfish using turkey basters. That way we're able to keep our hands safe from their stinging tentacles. We also use these turkey basters to make sure that they're getting as much food as possible. Once everyone in an exhibit has gotten their food, we'll also do a type of feed called broadcast feeding. We want to make sure that the jellyfish have enough food to last them until their next meal, so we'll put plenty in their tanks to make sure that they have plenty to eat. So what does a day as an aquarist look like? Well, here at Moody Gardens, there are certain things that all of us, not just the jelly biologists, but all aquarists have to do to make sure that our animals are being taken care of in the best way. One of the main things is water quality. Now, what is water quality? Water quality is where we take specific measurements of our water to make sure that the parameters or the different measurements are good for the different animals. We have a lot of different types of animals here at the aquarium, and different animals respond to different temperatures, salinities, and pHs differently. So those three that I just mentioned, temperature, salinity, and pH, are measurements we take every single day. So those of you who don't like chemistry, it is very important in the life of an aquarist. You need to know how the properties of the water can affect your animals. Specifically with jellyfish, they're actually able to take up nutrients, chemicals, all of these things directly from the water, meaning that it is very important for you to understand how the water works and what is in your water. These animals are made up of almost completely water. About 98% of their tissue is water, so they can take it up readily. Besides chemistry, you also really need to know the behaviors and the nutrition of your animals. Two more sciences. It's very important to understand all of these different things so that you can make sure you provide the best care for your animal. For myself, I actually worked in a lab where I learned about a lot of different jellyfish and other cnidarians or animals in Nigeria that have stinging cells. So I was able to use that background knowledge when I came into this job to make sure that these animals are getting their care. 
as I mentioned, that education is very, very important. The more you know, the better you're going to be able to take care of your animals. So I talked about water quality as one big responsibility that we have to do, but there's a lot of other things. We have to prepare diets, which I talked a little bit about earlier, about our life food. But as far as aquarists, that preparation of food can look really different depending on what species you're working with. It is really important to know exactly what your animal eats out wild, how often, how big they're supposed to be growing. So you need to really know a lot about your animal. So again, research, research, research. It's very important. As an aquarist, you are a scientist. You need to practice multiple disciplines and be able to incorporate them all together to provide the best care possible, which is what we all want to do. Another thing you need to be able to understand as an aquarist is life support systems, or LSS. This refers to anything that is having your exhibit function, whether that be a pump or some type of filtration. Here we have multiple different levels of filtration from biological filtration, such as bio balls, or mechanical filtration, such as filter socks or filter pads. All of these different types of filtrations pull out different wastes from the water that can affect the health of your animals. For example, biological filtration. That is where we have bacteria that is able to take waste, such as ammonia, and transform it into something that is less toxic, such as nitrate. So this ammonia is released in the waste of animals, and it is broken down pretty slowly by the bacteria in our filtration. As it gets broken down, it becomes less and less and less toxic. Once it gets down to nitrates, there's nothing more the bacteria can do. So then it becomes our job as aquarists to make sure we get those nitrates out of the water. How do we do that, you ask? Well, we do something called water changes. Now water changes, as the name implies, is we change the water out from the exhibit by taking out several gallons of water up to about 30% of our total gallonage of an exhibit, taking it out and replacing it with nice, clean seawater. We are very lucky here at Moody Gardens to be so close to the coast. We're actually able to take water from the bay, filter it out to make sure there's nothing in there that could cause problems for our exhibit, such as unwanted microbes and tiny little bacteria. And once we clean it and we bring it into our storage facility, we're actually able to add it to our exhibit so that we get fresh, clean seawater. The benefit of having the seawater instead of us just mixing our own is that we are able to get those nice trace elements that are found only in seawater and add it into our systems, giving us a more natural water that we are putting in all of our systems for our animals. As I mentioned earlier, jellyfish are really, really sensitive to what's in their water. So making sure that we have all those trace elements they need to develop is really important even when we're looking at them as very, very tiny babies, those little trace elements can actually help them grow big and strong. Other things that I mentioned, mechanical filtration, those filter socks, we have to make sure that we take care of those every single week, making sure that we are changing them out, replacing them with clean ones. Those mechanical filtrations, they're taking out things like waste. For us, they pick up tentacles. Because if we have tentacles from one species that gets into another species tank, they can actually sting each other. So it's really important that we keep up our cleaning to make sure that our animals stay nice and healthy. Now we've talked about the science and kind of what you need to know to be an aquarist and what we use on a daily basis to make sure we can take care of these animals. But there's another really important part of our job that we haven't quite even talked about yet and that's education, not just for us, but for the guests who come here every single day. So yeah, most of the time we spend in the back cleaning a tank, feeding something, preparing diets, doing water quality and chemistry. But we also spend time front of house talking with our guests, getting them excited about the work that we do. One thing that I've learned in this job is it's really important to be able to talk to people and tell them about what you do. Share that passion you have so that maybe they can have some passion for it too. Especially with the animals I work with, most people don't actually think of jellyfish as animals, as living, not quite breathing, but beautiful animals that they are.
One thing I like to say is I have a heart for the heartless. These animals that don't have really any organs inside of them besides a stomach and a mouth hold a very dear place in our hearts as we take care of them from every single stage of their life. And we like to talk to people about that, getting them excited, getting them excited to not only come to Moody Gardens and see these wonderful animals, but to take care of the home they come from. Ultimately, animal care professionals are in the field they are because they want to make sure that animals, not only in their facilities, but around the world, have a good place to live, a safe place to live. Conservation is a huge part of what we do. And it's hard to conserve and to care about things you don't know about. So being able to talk to people and being able to give presentations in front of a large group is a great skill to have. And if you don't have it, that's okay too. It's something that when I was in high school, I was terrified of giving presentations and, and talking in front of people. But as I got older and got a little wiser, I learned that my voice could make a huge impact. And if I do have that kind of impact on people, I want to make sure that they hear what they can do to take care of the oceans and to take care of these wonderful animals I get to take care of every single day. Now you guys got to see what we do and how we take care of these jellyfish on a daily basis. We're going to talk a little bit on how we got here and what you guys can do to get involved in the animal care field. So one of the things we always recommend when people ask us what's the best thing that they can do to get involved in this field, to start off in this field, is to always get involved in whatever local aquarium or animal husbandry opportunities that are near you, be that involving yourselves uh, in volunteer work or just getting to know your local animal care uh, facilities a little better. Any way that you familiarize yourself with the work that they do or the facility itself will really help you get in the door. Yeah, and if you guys don't have the ability to go out and volunteer, what you can do is just try to learn as much as you can. Through Sea Camp, you get exposed to so many opportunities, and we're hoping that this is one for you as well. So whether you are in love with marine mammals or invertebrates like our jellyfish here, try to learn as much as you can. The more you know about an animal, the more you know how they survive and how they live out in the wild, really helps and really goes into taking care of these animals. Both of us went to school and got degrees in marine biology so we can understand the animals we want to take care of a little bit better. And the better you know them, the better you know how to take care of them. So we hope you enjoyed being in the life of a jelly biologist for just a short period of time. And we hope you guys will reach for your dreams and find the careers that you really love. Thanks guys.